Mm-hmm. Dayton. See this little Dayton? This is a DTA 120BT. And this is an amp. It's a speaker amp with an input and a headphone out and Bluetooth. And it's under $100 and it's 60 watts a channel. Uh, this is the Onkyo A9010. And it has no Bluetooth. And while it does have multiple inputs and a DAC, uh, it's only 44 watts a channel. And it costs more than three times what this does. So if you're looking for a small desktop solution, this probably isn't it. Yet this is here. So let's talk about it. Because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about watts and what's up. Watts, watts, it's only 44 watts. It's only 44 watts. Let me tell you what 44 watts gets you. Um, deaf, if you try really hard. I'm gonna look at the back first because I think the back's the most important part of this. We've got a phono in, which I will be turning on the turntable during this thing. This is a U-turn uh, orbit that someone loaned to me. Um, we've got two digital inputs. We've got uh, RI modes for um, line two or line one to, to bounce between I don't, the switches. We've got four analog line ins, one analog line out, which will feed the DAC out, which is why that's on the desk, and your speaker terminals, and then a remote control for, for infrared, so you can adjust things, which is RI mode, and, okay. The front, this unit's like, uh, I don't know, 17 pounds, 14 pounds, 14 or 17 pounds. One second. I need you. I need you. Oh, I'm gonna keep you clean. You're about to get your review. Um, I've had this amp for a while, and I don't know why I haven't like jumped on the chance to review it real fast. Yeah, yeah. Get all them skickies off there. This will probably be in a yard sale, which I have once a month from the first to the tenth. Because, um, as good as it is, and it's good, spoilers, all right, views over, go home. Um, I don't have a use for one. Big ass power button. I lose something important? I hope I didn't lose something important. Big ass power button. Um, if you notice in the back, by the way, the power plug is attached, which is the bane. The, the bane. It's the fucking bane. Not, not the, imagine the fire, not, no, the, my bane. Of the existence of the world. Clean, clean. Infrared receiver. So, turn on. You have uh, tone controls. You have bass and treble and balance. Which is, this is like old school amp. This is like an old school amp. Look at it. It looks so damn old school. You get a direct button, which will disable the tone controls. I don't know if it'll do anything besides that. If it, if it changes circuitry to avoid everything. Because the balance still works with direct on. It's got a loudness mode, which is basically like putting on a predetermined tone control of a little more treble, a little more bass. You get an LED array here, uh, digital one, digital two, line one, two, three, four, five. Here's line five, by the way. It's a three and a half millimeter auxiliary on the front. Quarter inch headphone jack. Here's your phono light. Here's your input select. And here's your big ass volume knob. Note, big ass volume knob has a little divot. That's it. And you know that maybe a little divot's enough for most people to tell where the volume is in this amp. And you're like, oh, it's only 44 watts. You probably need, it doesn't matter. It totally does matter. And I'm going to fix um, said amp's problem right now because I give a dime. Get it? No, you don't get you don't get the joke yet. See, I'm going to fill that little divot with blue tack, And then I'm going to stick a fucking dime on it. A goddamn dime. So that during this presentation, you can see where the volume's at. Because this does have a remote control, you're supposed to use this in like a living room environment, or at least from far away. And if you can't see where the volume is, then you're gonna, you can't see where the volume is, and that's annoying. So let's plug everything in. Um, left to right, we've got speaker. Oh, and I am using the um, Kef R300s. I'll link those in the description. This is for the little dot tube amp. This is so we can compare DACs. This is coming from the OL DAC over there. Putting that into line one. Here is the fiber optic coming off of my review computer. Wallpaper in the description. 
and we've got the phono inputs coming from the U-turn. Now there's a grounding wire here, which this unit doesn't have a ground to connect to that. So everyone's like, uh, and it sounds fine. So try it or don't try it. Uh, should I turn on the remote? There we go. That's it. It clicks on. Now, if I shut off direct mode, the only power indicator here is the input indicator. So there's no like power light there and it's very strange. Everything usually has a power light next to the power button, but this is going for very minimalist. It's just digital one and two are an orange LED and then lines are all green and phono is green. So digital two is what we're in by the way right now. So let's slide it up. You got, so you got one orange LED indicator that says this unit is on. Now it's, Class AB, which means it's got big vents on top. And if you're gonna think about buying this for your desk, and once I think the review is done, you might think about that. You might want to think about using it as a monitor stand. Like literally, like see, see my 21 by 9 that I'm testing for BenQ. It's up on top of foam blocks there, and it's got a very very narrow stand. If you were to put this on your desk back there, you could definitely put a monitor on top of it as long as you're not covering more than like. Let me see this much of the vent. You need air. Air needs to come out. Don't go putting a monitor stand on it that's like, yep, that's fine. It's not going to overheat ever. I'll, I'll be upset. All right? I saw Brave Little Toaster too many times. That kills things. Don't do that. So, everything's hooked up. Digital is enabled. We're actually still playing music. Turn the volume knob. <laughs> Now, these are pretty efficient speakers. They're not the most efficient speakers, but I'll tell you this much, 44 watts is fucking plenty for this. Yeah, on the desk, I've, I've not taken anything past half. If we use the remote for volume. Ooh, magic dime spin. Let's look at the remote for a second, because I, I like to bitch about remotes. So here's this remote, right? Right, Ankyo remote. It's the RC9902S. Oh, look at all these buttons and features, and oh, it's display and dimmer, and they do nothing. This unit shares the same remote with probably one of their CD controls or their expected to stack. So power works, input selector works. We could switch between which DAC we're using. So now we're using the other DAC. Muting also works. Muting doesn't indicate anywhere. Oh, actually, muting does. I'm sorry, it blinks the input. So you can have the volume knob up, mute, and then you'll know it's muted because that blinks. And then I think, yeah, no, as soon as you touch the volume, it unmutes, which I've found a couple units in, the, in my passings that will unmute when you hit volume up, but when you're hitting volume down, they won't unmute, they'll just lower and then unmute when you hit volume up. Just a thought. All right, back to remote control. God damn it, you're getting off track. This works, these work, this muting button works, these volume buttons work. That's it. The gray buttons, these one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. All of these buttons don't do shit, Captain. They're for other pieces of equipment that this is not. However, this is Z-Reviews and I hate seeing things go to waste. So if we put up the volume, I don't want to change, change tracks. Very quiet song, let's skip ahead in it. I'm sorry, let's, let's skip ahead this one. Pause, hmm. Unpause, next track. Oh, I like this song, but I like uh, that song better. Oh, Screaming Slave. And let's skip ahead into Screaming Slave. How am I doing this? This remote is not, not supposed to go. Pause. Um, I have a flirk up here. See that little USB dingy dingy? That's an infrared receiver. And I tried to pimp that thing and I really should give it its own review. Now let's look at the software for a second. Here's the software. And you can literally pick whether it emulates a Kodi controller or in this case, media keys, media keys. So I just, you know, I hit this is now this button and then it is. So now I can use this remote that would otherwise be fucking useless 
and I can, you know, arrow up, arrow down, enter to play a song, pause. I made left and right page up and page down so I could jump giant swaths. And I could set up input menu, return dimmer display, all these buttons to do something with the FLIR. The point is, the remote control that it comes with, um, you, it, it, just, here, ready? I'll, there. That's what's used on the remote control by default. So if you want to use the rest of this, invest $25 or whatever into a FLIRC if you're using a home theater PC. Moving on. We should probably talk about how this thing sounds. It's very simple. It's a very simple thing. Yes, it has some switching. It's phono uh, input, which, you know, uh, phono preamps can be a little bit expensive. They're, they're roughly there. It's got a good DAC. Let's talk about the DAC straight off the bat because I was unsure about it and then because I had the fiber optic hooked up into it and then I took the output to my old DAC and I plugged that into it so we're on that actually currently now. So that's the old DAC I'm listening to and if I switch this now it's going to use the fiber optic and now that's the fiber optic. And on speakers there's like no possible way to tell the difference between the two. On headphones however because this does have a headphone out and it's a $300 $350 unit. It's, it's not cheap, but honestly, for 44 watts a channel, you would think you'd get more, more for your money. Don't ask for that. This is one of the only units that I trust that isn't lying. When when units come out and they're like a thousand watts, Sony comes out with like a little thing, thousand watts, yeah, bro, thousand, oh my fucking god. Ask about distortion with a thousand watts in that. There's a higher model than this, that's the 9050, that's got a little more wattage but it's like $150 more, it's just a little more wattage. There's something about a giant, like actual full-size amp that is just super appealing as far as sound quality goes. Because I do a lot of little baby mini amps in this channel because that's what people can handle. Where the hell, I, I, it's so small I lost it. There it is, look, it's fucking just got lost. Try losing this, go ahead. Look, this is nice and convenient and small and on your desk. And it, it, trust me, when I get the reviews of this and it's brother without the Bluetooth, they're going to get recommended. They're good little solid amps. And the power supply is bigger than this. It's a big ass brick. But this sounds better. Less power sounds better. It just sounds better. And it's hard to describe. It's not like a warmth. It's not like, oh, well, it's crystalline. It just is a better fucking sound because you're giving all the all the components that are squeezed into this with class d get to spread out and live and there's the power supply and there's the heat sink for the thing and there's the giant capacitors and i would have opened it up if i nah we're good i don't want to spit in it besides if i'm yard selling this i'd rather not avoid any warranties not that any of them are still left all right more treble let's talk about the tone controls for a second tone controls are both a blessing and a curse. Um, sometimes you have speakers that really need tone adjustment. And I, I, I'm gonna point around, I'm gonna turn around and go, oh, hello, K-Bass. After listening to the, the speakers I've listened to over the last year, which has been at least a year since the K-Bass, I put those on, I haven't ha heard those in a while, and I'm like, you know what, they need more treble. They just need more treble. I had them up here, and I'm like, mm, they need more treble. And then I turn this knob, and I had... <laughs> I had more treble. It's actually a really delicate tone control. Some tone controls are just like, ah, uh, bass, bass. Wait, wait. I feel like you could really hone things in with it. Now you shouldn't have to touch tone controls ever. That's that's just me. That's my OCD. I'm a reviewer, and what you get out of the box is what I review. People say, oh, you need to mod these headphones to review them. No, nay, 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 nay. I need to review the headphones and the speakers and the amps. Modding, we could talk about later on a live stream, but you're buying these speakers. Do they need more treble? Then I have to say that. I can't just say, oh, yeah, by the way, I had more treble, because that's not easy for everybody. With this, though, you can just... Yeah, I swear I know what it's a little more bass, you want a little more low end warmth, you want to get a little less treble, it's a little too sharp, you could do that. But mostly, I would run it with the direct mode on, which is... Actually, let's try, let's try loudness right now. Hold on. Loudness is a little bit rough. I feel like everything that the loudness button does, you could do on your own with just the tone controls, and you could do it much more gentle. 
Loudness is designed for when you can only play quiet. Hey, hey, Brian. Brian, you know, you know when you're playing music at like 11 o'clock at night, your mom's gonna yell at you? Um, that's when you would lower the volume and then put on loudness. And then even at the lower volume, all those sounds that would normally be missing are just brought up a little bit, so it still sounds like a full sound, even at quieter volume. That's the point of a loudness button. Direct, however, and I hate the fact that the direct button is fucking blue. Loudness is orange, and direct is motherfucking motherfucking blue. Fuck you, motherfucking blue. So I would have it on direct all the time, even though I think it's just disabling this, and the, the tone controls do have a nice, solid detent where it stops, and that's where it is now. So you could just leave direct off, but I'm OCD and like, mm, I want direct lit up. I want to know that nothing is fucking with the signal before it leaves, which is what direct does. All right, next track. Next track. TJ and the Shondells. That was my fault. Crystal Blue Persuasion. Switching Dax. Now, I'm not going to say that the DACs in this aren't... Th that OLL DAC is better than the DAC in this, but I can't tell through speakers. Where I can tell is through high-efficiency headphones. So here are my 2000Xs. If we are playing music through uh, speakers like we are now, my plug said things in, speakers stop. actually decent quality decent quality headphone amplification and I know that because I it has line outs so here's the thing someone asked on the Amazon page can you hook this up to a subwoofer and they were like yeah it's got line outs and that's not how that works I have the subwoofer right down there I have the uh, the Mackie sub and the problem with line outs is line outs are line outs right now this amplifier here is even though the volume is all the way down here, this amplifier is completely separate. It's feeding off of this into this, and no matter what this is doing, well, here I'll unplug that. You're getting line out, which is, a, by the way, a very good thing. So now, because I'm trying to work this out in my head to how what what is this? Co it costs you three hundred to three hundred fifty dollars, but it has a decent DAC. It's decent. I think standalone $100 DAX will probably beat what's in it, especially when you're going through the headphone route, but it's a good starter. So you, you cover your DAC, it covers your headphone amp, and it covers your speakers, and it has a remote. Doesn't have Bluetooth, but that's easy enough to add. I'll link to the damn MPAL thing, which just plugs in so you'd make line one or two Bluetooth receiver. So for $25 extra, dollars, you could add Bluetooth. Phono is interesting because at some point, Zeos is going to start getting into vinyl. Because Zeos has to. Zeos is going to hit 100,000 viewers. You probably hit it before this video is out. Um, and people need to be told things about vinyl. Oh, I see some dirt. Okay. Switch this over to phono. Unplug said headphones. Or that you don't have to, you can listen to vinyl. Put on some Yoshi Horikawa. That's Vapor. I bought the vinyl for the Vapor album from Yoshi Horikawa. Because if anyone should own that, it should be me. So now we're listening to that. So it covers your preamp, it covers your DAC covers your speaker amp, it covers your headphone amp, it has remote control, that's five things it has. It's got multiple inputs. Multiple, and it's got two digital inputs, it's got five analog inputs, five analog inputs. That means if you can get a game console, or you got, you know, what else is analog input? I don't know. It's got five analog inputs. It's also got a front input, it's got phono, which, you know, I enjoy vinyl because it's hard work. It's playing cards to level it, and it's just a bubble thing, and then it's, you know, oh, it's turn it with stylus sounds different. 
It's a hobby. That's a hobby. It's like collecting stamps or eating ants. It's one of those. Eating fire ants and playing vinyl are similar in difficulty and annoyance. But yeah, look, we get this, and then... Now, vinyl output's quieter, usually, than, um, it's a moving magnet, not moving coil, only phono preamp, so you should know that. Most, if you spent, like, under eight, nine hundred dollars in your turntable, odds are it's moving magnet. But it is line, everything that you select here lines out and you can run it to something else. Now in this case, I think this is probably the most likely scenario. You get this, it acts as your DAC, it acts as your solid state amp, and then you can just go, I wanna hear tubes, and you throw a little dot next to it. Or Tor audio amp. You, you throw something here. By the way, vinyl, vinyl, through tubes, through HD600s, even though I had this volume maxed, because I sort of have to, it's, this is an experience. This is feels, my audiophilia is, oh, my beard. Oh, my beard is growing so fast. Um, yes. As I was hoping, the tone controls don't feed out to this. So I can run that and these. Lower that, by the way. So we could switch back now. Final. Whoa, okay. Finals quiet, remember that. And that is a lot of Foo Fighters. Um, the difference between the DAC, the internal DAC and the old DAC. In the highs, it's just a little bit, just, just the smallest bit clearer. But that's all you need in a DAC, it's just the smallest bit clearer. And let's go into a $100 DAC. Go to a three, four hundred dollar DAC. I'm um, thinking you're pushing it, but I mean, at that point, if you're going for a three or four hundred dollar DAC, you're gonna go for a three or four hundred dollar dedicated headphone amp or something like the Emotiva Base X or the. I have the own uh, S6 there. So, this is perfect starter material. Lower that. So, 44 watts a channel. Ignore that, please. It'll push anything you put in your desk. Period. Stop. End of line. That low end. That low end. It, they really are tasteful tone controls. What else have we got? Let me see. Next, next force of nature. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Relax. New York mix. I'll take that. Volume up. One of the other things that bothers me about this remote, yes, it only does those buttons, but there's other functions. These direct and loudness could totally be on here if they were, if you can't program them to happen. I would love to be able to put on loudness while from, a, from a remote, but you can't. But at least you can switch the inputs and the basic functionality. Putting on direct again. Like I want to play it too much. Back to vinyl, you think? Because Zeos, you never play vinyl. Put on vinyl. And I gotta take the volume now. You can see the volume because there's a fucking dime stuck to it. By the way, what you're seeing here is bad. You do not want your speaker and your turntable like on the same surface. However, I do have two two inch foam blocks, then the quarter inch yoga mat under that, and quarter inch yoga mat under this onto a solid cutting board which has the Emotiva MC700 on it and then the actual U-turn orbit has really nice rubber feet three rubber feet so if I do if I feel the speaker then those then the table then this then this then actually the the, the, the shelf that the thing is that base is barely coming through I'm not getting into vinyl but you don't want vibrations affecting that because that literally runs on vibrations so, you wouldn't have it this close. Some of the headphones I've tried, because um, I had to run the gamut a bit on this. Um, obviously my 600s, and I'm running them on the tube. Let's take them out of the tube, let's go straight solid state. Boom. What are you listening to? Power, I, now, keep in mind this is vinyl. Let's go back to like 
the internal DAC. All right, 600s in this right here is a Hollywood song. 10 o'clock, powers him just fine. Fucking 10 o'clock, powers him just fine. Let's move on to uh, Fostex T20 Mark III's. Um, I didn't praise these enough. I didn't praise the 20s enough. And these have these short 1840 pads, which are cheaper than 1540 pads, but they work better on this because it's an open back, sort of. And then I've got the, I forgot where this one came from, eBay. So these are a slightly modified pair of T20s. And you know, anything in that range is gonna be impossible to drive, so. Noon. Absolutely fucking satisfied. And clearly too, see that's the thing, it's not just like, I've plugged headphones into the front of like receivers. Like a surround receiver, almost all surround receivers have a quarter inch. They're not very good at it. But this one, this one isn't bad. I'd have no issues and I wouldn't be yelling at you, oh, why are you using that? That's terrible, this is a terrible thing. And I have to hear it for myself. I, wouldn't, I don't usually believe that sort of shit. I'm sure if the X7S was fed from the lineouts, it would be a little bit more robust, a little bit clip, but uh, all-in-one, $350 with those five bullet points we talked about, vinyl, remote, lineout, it's, it's hard to argue against this thing. And it's a monitor stand. It's a goddamn monitor stand. You shove it in the front, it's all centered, you gotta stick a dime on the fucking volume control or you can't see it. You literally can't see it without the dime. It doesn't have to be a dime, it could be a toonie. Line in, uh, back to phono, hold on. Now on vinyl, which is quieter, I'm gonna run this to be loud, like fucking loud, three o'clock. So those are the headphones I threw on this. The only other headphones that I put on this that it didn't work. And it's, I got the Aeons recently. I got both the closed and open set of uh, Mr. Speaker's Aeons. And they don't work on anything. Like I reviewed those TX. And I should mention that little TX um, 301DA, AI 301DA. Because it's more money than this. It's, it's, it's $400 versus 350. And it's got a lot of similar things. It's got Bluetooth, but it doesn't have line out. It has more wattage, but it distorts. This never distorts. I've not, I've not taken this to the point where distortion has happened on any of the speakers. It's just clear and solid in all aspects. Interstellar OST, coward. Here we go. Let's skip forward a bit. Uh... So, really, why TX other than the size? Has a remote, yes, this has a remote, yes. More wattage, but distort, so I prefer this for actually powering speakers. That's smaller, it wins. The headphone outs, it's good. This might be better. This just might be better, this is better. I mean, just the fact that you, I could have this here too, and all of this can work in with the vinyl. The vinyl is the real, it's basically, would you rather have built-in Bluetooth or built-in phono preamp? That seems to be the case. I've very rarely seen things that have both. I have the, um, underneath that is the little uh, PS Audio Sprout 100. I think that has both, I think. I'll have to check. Point is, I want for nothing with this. I don't want it to be smaller because then you couldn't act as a monitor stand. It gets warm. It does get warm. It doesn't get hot, but it gets warm. This is a recommendation. If you could fit this, and let me walk back so you get an actual view of it. If this can fit in your desk, it's like an old, I mean, I can't even say old VCR because none of you will even remember what it, what the VCR, the oath? Is that from, is that from Fortnite? If, is the VCR a bomb in Fortnite? No, it's not, Jimmy. Poor little bastard. It's old school. I love the center volume knob. I wish it had an indicator. I wish it had a glowing, like a glowing thing. Because I'm going to be back here with my remote. And I'm going to be like... 
Where's the volume? So you can see the volume. I can see the volume. The dime is now vertical. I stuck a dime to it with blue tack. Right? I shouldn't have to do that to any piece of equipment. I shouldn't have to get magic markers and color in indicators like that. Or, 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 or like this. I shouldn't have to ever do that to see what I'm touching. I shouldn't have to do this. One, two, three, four. That sort of lives. That's, that's okay. There's a couple that are just like, it's, it's annoying. It's, it's great angry music. I'm tired of this volume indicator bullshit. Angry. That's a great song. Let's go to vinyl. Power off. Yes. Do I recommend this? Yes, 100%. Can you live with the size? Can you, that's not my, up to me. That's not up to me. This is a four foot desk, by the way, this thing is a four foot folding plastic table. If I move this to the back and all the wires were able to just get, say that far away from the wall and I had a normal monitor, even that fucking monster, and I just plopped it on top with a nice thin stand, nothing fat. They don't make fat stands anymore. And just plopped it on top, you're, you're, you're good to go. You could power any speaker. These are $1,300 fucking pair of speakers. Sound fantastic. Hard to drive. Fucking 600 ohm hard to drive. Oh, 300, 300 ohm hard to drive. And then super efficient so I could listen to the little fine details of you fucking with it. I didn't put IEMs in it. I mean, you guys can probably figure that stuff out. I, I'd probably, if you're using IEMs, I'd probably go with something a little more dedicated for that sort of low power cleanliness. But on these, it was good. And these are 32 ohms. Yes, this is a yes. The wallpaper is a yes. It's the big guns. You're bringing out the big guns. The, you, you don't need to look at this and say, oh man, that's so old school. Get something more modern. Because this isn't as good. Yeah, it's smaller. Much fucking smaller. But mm, I'm just going to make that sound at it. Because I'm not ready to do the review of that. It's just, mm, sometimes bigger is better. Just ask your girlfriend, or your mom, or your girlfriend's mom. Um, what are we doing? Oh, it's off now. Power on, volume down. Why is that still spinning? I thought I shut that off. There we go. And now let's see, input select. Back that shit up to input one. Yes. So here you go. This will be in the yard sale. The wallpaper will be in the description. The speakers are going back to their owner. I'm reviewing that. I don't know if I'm going to sell that or not yet. I don't think it's going to beat my dark voice, but I don't know yet. This will be in the yard sale. You'll see the announcement video around the first of the month because I'm always late for some reason. Just like your girlfriend's mom's period. And um... Oh, that was interesting. So there you go. Fully muted. So that's a little warning to you. Don't don't accidentally don't mute and then brush. I like it. I like it. Is a 9050 worth it? If you need more power. I think it has a one or two more options. It might even have Bluetooth, but it's just so much more money. For three hundred dollars, this is a fucking steal. It covers everything you need to start off your audiophile life. You can get real speakers. And uh, you just can't put powered monitor. I mean, you guess you could put powered monitors on that, but then what's the point of buying a speaker ramp? You could do that different ways. Look, I could be a, I could be a hipster. I could be an audiophile hipster. Uh, budget, budget audiophile hipster budget. Links to this in the description. Links to that yard sales if they happen, and I'll see you in the next one. Wait, that's, that's get, no, that's uh, that's no, nope.